G'day everyone, Kyle Question here again. Today I'm down in Springfield Lakes and I'm joined by Naren Sinatambi. Naren, thanks for joining us. Hi Kyle, thanks for having me. Great good to see to, you again, good mate. Good to see you again, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So mate, I'm very keen to uh, share with the audience, I guess that there's, there's so many things that I want to talk to you about on so little time. Sure. Um, so we'll try and sort of stay as focused as we can on yes. Greater Realty. Yes. But to give some some of the people that don't know, know you or, or your father some, some context, where we're sitting right now, let's go back 20 years to, to where it all started. Sure. Well, actually, it's it's interesting to know that this is our 25th year 25th. since we started here. So, wow. uh, you know, that's how fast time goes. And we've just added another five years. But in 1992, my father purchased 7,000 acres of land, um, really cusp between Ipswich and Brisbane. And it was a parcel of land which had no main infrastructure, no main amenity, not much of anything. Um, and it actually belonged to the Australian Forestry Holdings, but it was only about 30 kilometers from the major CBD of Brisbane. And um, he saw it as a thriving community, a city in the making, let's call it. And that city in the making is now what we call Greater Springfield. Greater Springfield uh, encompasses six suburbs, of which Springfield Lakes is one of them. Uh, Springfield, Springfield Lakes, which was the second suburb that came about in 1999, Springfield Central in 2001. More recently, and if we have a chance, we'll go upstairs to show you the latest addition, which is Spring Mountain, uh, Brookwater and Augustine Heights. So those are the six suburbs that make up the region of Greater Springfield. And essentially what we envisage this whole place is a city in the making between Brisbane and Ipswich. And it's really become a thriving community. We have three families moving in here every single day. On a weekly basis, we spend $10 million on this project, whether that's through the development of a private hospital. We actually have 12 schools here, 10 childcare centers, a major university. The university started with 200 students. It's got over 2,000 now. Um, and like I said, we have 33,000 people who call Greater Springfield home every single day. So, you know, we've achieved a lot in the last 25 years. And the scary thing about that, Carl, is we are less than 20% developed. Wow, only um, 20%. So I think a lot of people say, well, you, you're across six suburbs. And I forgot to mention, of course, uh, our major golf course, which was designed by Greg Norman, known as Brookwater. Um, a very tough golf course. I'm not sure if you've experienced it, but you and I will go out there and have a game <laughs> one time. But um, there's a lot happening and, you know, in terms of the growth, a lot of people think that we're probably at the 60% mark and they're quite astounded when we tell them that we're less than 20% done. Yeah, that's um, crazy. So you can see that when we say it's a 50-year project and a lot of the growth is still to come, <clears throat> it really is. Um, so where Greater Realty stands in perspective of that, last year we sat back and we actually have 16 established real estate agencies here. And I love the real estate area. My area is more property development and really envisaging these projects, whether it's an apartment development or a commercial building. We've recently worked on the General Electric, which is the world's eighth largest company, and they've got their state headquarters. So that's more what my focus was, business development, commercial development. But I really saw an opportunity why the developer is not also having a real estate offering to mums and dads. Um, I think that all our real estate agents are fantastic. I know a lot of them personally, and they are super passionate and super committed about the area. But from my perspective, it's our family company who started this vision 25 years ago. And I would like to think that our knowledge of the project is quite intricate. Yeah. And I believe that not only is it an opportunity, but it's an obligation that we share that level of knowledge and serviceability with our mums and dads who bought into our vision over the last 25 years. Um, I feel that many agents, and there are many great agents out there, many who I'm, I'm privileged to call my, my friends and mentors, um, some could argue that they're not necessarily loyal to a specific area in terms of their sale whether they choose to sell in New Farm or Graysville or the Gold Coast, they'll, they're quite happy to travel fair distance. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that model at all. 
but we are totally committed to only servicing the greater Springfield community because we're so obsessively passionate about it. You know, it's the area that we started 25 years ago and we're not just about selling a home to you and your wife and your children. We want to tell you and take you up to the sky deck and say, Carl, you're only bought into 20% of what this vision can become. We're not just going to sell you on the house itself. We're going to sell you on the opportunity that is presented by the house. So I think that's what's unique about Greater Realty. Um, and we, we take it as a matter of pride of getting intimately involved with the community, putting on charitable events and fun days. And we actually have a team who all pretty much live in the area. And that's really important to me. So I think the initial reaction by some of my friends and, and real estate colleagues was, it's the big bad developer, you know, trying to take money out of our pocket and nothing could be further than the truth. We actually want them all to be abundantly successful. And I really share an abundance mentality that I feel with 33,000 people living here, and that only represents 20% of the market, mm. Yep. There is easily room for another 16 agencies and all of them can do well. Um, and I feel that we're all in this to lift each other's game up. Sure. You know? So that's really where Greater Springfield, uh, with Springfield Land Corporation decided to establish Greater Realty. We're celebrating our third month. Um, we've got 30 listings on the books. We've gotten away 10 sales. So it's a, a, a steady start and mm. I'm very happy with that. So in terms of your your background and your experience obviously is a lot more i would say corporate and, and commercial related yes how have you found the transition to residential and what have been some of the challenges you found along the way yeah it's it's been a, a massive learning curve but i you know unless you're learning you're not growing as far as i'm concerned so um coming from a corporate environment where we've got a legal department that does all the legal stuff an accounting department that handles all the financial stuff and marketing you know you you get to appreciate those people a lot more because, you know, as the director of Greater Realty, I'm the accountant, the marketer, and the, you know, the, the HR person, the one who asks everyone if they're okay. Um, so you really take on the responsibility of everything. Um, but the team is much more intimate, so we don't necessarily have all the issues of a major corporation and Springfield Land Corporation is quite a major corporation, in, mm. especially in the property development field. Um, I would say that we are working on one of the most unique projects in the country, um, but Greater Realty being an arm of that, we make sure that we service the community and the mums and dads are our number one priority. And we, we take that responsibility very, very seriously because and I take that as a personal obligation because these people essentially bought into a vision that my family sold them. And a lot of the time, I can look you in the eye and tell you it's not about the commission. Yeah. It's making sure that they are feeling that they got a great experience. And that's the way that my father instilled in me to do business. Look after the people and the money will follow. And I also think that's probably a benefit of greater realty where the traditional agents model, they really have to perform to make sure that they're getting compensated and you know we all have bills to pay and that's i completely respect that for us we can afford to be a little bit of a loss leader and really making sure that our customers and our clients are our absolute top priority and i'm quite i'm quite open about the fact that if they are unwilling to pay a higher commission because they really feel that they, their financial circumstances don't allow them to do that, we will accept a lower commission because we're part of a bigger company yeah. that can afford to take that hit. So service really is a priority to us. And I think that's a bit of a privilege that I take very seriously because the traditional real estate model, they do have to pay bills. So yeah. um, serviceability, we can afford it to be our number one strategy. And it's something that I'm quite committed about. But dealing with a mom and dad market is very deal different than dealing with a, a CEO of a General Electric. One is just um, numbers, right? And the other one is complete emotions. Absolutely. You know, they're saying, look, what's right? We're a public company. We've got to show returns and, and, and all the rest of it. And um, you have to understand that when you're dealing with a mom and dad, they're worrying about how they're going to pay their kids' school fees. Yeah. And, you know, I take that again very seriously 
Um, so you have to become a lot more humble in your approach and you have to realize that you're dealing with people's livelihood in a very direct manner. Yeah. Um, one could argue that CEOs and management figures move on from roles um, and that's just a part of life, but you are messing with these people's livelihood and in many ways their financial livelihood. Mm. Um, so we take that very seriously and we try and understand that in many cases, it might be an investment to some people, but it's their family home and they paid X for it and they want to see a higher return than X. Sure. So yeah. you need to have a very <clears throat> humble and down to earth approach. And we're really blessed that our staff are all people with families. They're all property owners. So they embrace those pressures. They feel it. Yeah. Um, they're not so affluent that they don't really care. Um, they've all got those pressures. And so they empathize with their clients. Sure. So I, I want to ask you a question, um, and it's probably a little bit more personal, but I want agents out there to understand your, your position. What does greater realty mean in the spectrum of the Springfield Land Corp? Because obviously this is this is your this is your vision, this is your venture. Yes. I think a lot of agents are perhaps and, and I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but perhaps saying, well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter to you because yeah, it, you know, you've got Springfield Land Corp. Yeah. You've got all of these these assets and things that are going to yep. going to come to you anyway. Talk to me about that. Like, yeah, where does that where does that sit? And, and it's a, it's a really good conversation because I think people probably see the surname and they say, "Well, you're very financially established." Yes. You know, really, you don't <clears throat> care if it works. Your 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 father's going to uh, underwrite it. Let's be very honest about it. And um, I completely understand why they see that. But for me, I have been really advocating for this agency and I'll be up front my father didn't want to do it yeah uh, we've had the said, conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we have <laughs> and um, he said we don't need to do it and I said actually we do need to do it because I believe and please I, I I'm proud to say that I'm, I'm friends with a lot of the local agents um, and I think that we have some absolute superstars in terms of our local uh, real estate agent community but I believe that we can do things different, not better. And from my family, I believe that we have that obligation and it's an obligation that I personally take very seriously. And the knowledge base that I have, only because I've literally grown up in this community. I, I've seen it when, I, it started when I was nine years old, um, sorry, 14 years old. So I've seen it grow from nothing. And this, is my division of Springfield Land Corporation that I'm personally accountable for. And I guess whilst every business needs to make money, I strongly believe that if you look after people, the money will come. And regardless of what people think, Springfield Land Corporation, in the end of the day, is still a small family company. Yeah. We are not a public company. Um, and I know a lot of people probably see the articles in the papers about the BRW and, you know, the wealth figures and all that kind of stuff. As any astute business person knows, a lot of that is tied up in assets. Yes. Yeah. You don't grab your ATM card and say, okay, I'm going to go and get X million dollars yeah, <laughs> and go yeah. and buy an island. <laughs> it's not um, liquid. Correct. Yeah. So it's really tied up in the legacy of the project. So, so this is your way of contributing to that but, legacy. But it's really my way of giving back to a community that has served my family with so much loyalty and belief saying, I think you guys are crazy. I also think you're crazy enough to pull this off and I'll believe in you. And I am very committed and I tell my staff that I'm very, I'm very passionate to make sure that our clients are looked after and they make a profit on their property, even if their commission is less. And that's why we don't have a lot of agents but I believe we have the right agents so that to me this is a very personal journey for me greater realty is something that I want to give back to the community and it was more instilled in me when I went to a real estate conference that I believe you attended with Arnold Schwarzenegger he said really what is the point unless you're giving back you make a bunch of money and you know all these things are fantastic yeah but in 20 20 years time a lot of that money will be gone. And if you haven't created special memories, what's the point? Mm. And some people out there in YouTube land are gonna be saying, well, that sounds really warm and fuzzy, but I look forward to proving it to them in the next year 
And again, today we're going down to the local markets um, and we'll be there again tomorrow. We're having an information session and we never do the hard sell. Yeah. In fact, at these kind of things, we've got a rule that we don't talk about real estate at all. We just get out there. Um, next month, we will be starting a monthly high tea where 100% of the proceeds will be going back to local community groups, local sporting clubs. And I'm able to use my position in Springfield Land Corporation to have those events at places like Brookwater and reduce the amount of profit that Brookwater makes and increase the amount of profit that goes to the community. So, I, you know me, Carl, I don't consider myself a person of profile or any of these things that some others might consider me. I'm just an everyday person. But if there is any profile to use, I want to use it to give back to the community. Yeah, it's yeah. really my driving force. And I think a lot. I mean, there there is a number of agents that are that are already doing things that give back. On you know, I know people like Jesse James and you know those, those guys. There's a um, uh, there's a number of agents out there which already are, are implementing some of these things. But I do think that people look at it and get overwhelmed by it. it needs to be this great grandiose. That, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, Michael Devlin, who goes and feeds the homeless on a Tuesday night. Yes. It doesn't have to be this grand, world-changing gesture. Yes. If you can just do something small to start with, you know, and, and build on that, that's, that's all it needs to be. Every little change yes. makes a difference, right? It does. And I think you, you really do it to feed your soul. It has to be about more than the comms and the fancy cars. There's nothing wrong with those things. Yeah. But I've spoken to so many people who have achieved those great things, and five years later, they're quite disillusioned. They're saying, well, it wasn't really worth it. Yeah. But people like Michael, who I'm sure Michael has a family, takes time away on a Tuesday to give back. Mm. And that's what makes him great, you know? And almost subsequently to that, as a byproduct, he will get more business. Absolutely. It's yeah. an incredible thing, but he doesn't ask for it. That's right. He doesn't go and serve the homeless and say, mate, in case you know anyone. <laughs> you That's know? It. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think it, a successful business is about doing it for the right reasons. And I completely embrace the fact that some agents are saying, oh, you know, the big bad developer is doing these things. I can't change their opinions. I can only prove it through the, the way that we conduct the business. Yeah. So we, we touched a little bit there on, on staff. You said you've got quite a small team. Danny was on his YouTube the other day saying he's turned over 25 percent of your staff in the last three months yes how have you found employing real estate agents working with real estate agents what's your sort of vision for the type of agent that you want to attract to your business i want a real estate agent first of all i want them to have a purpose when i sit down with my staff and we interviewed every single one of them we asked them what do you want out of your life and out of your career because when I take them on, they almost become a member of my family. Any one of my close team who work with me, they'll know, I treat them like they're my family. I worry about them in the evenings. I worry about them on the weekends. How am I helping them get to where they need to be? And it, it is something that I take very seriously because I come from a family company. Mm. Um, so when I find out what they want and what their why is, I can help them. Because if their why is not to make $800,000. It's no use pushing them and having an ultra-aggressive approach to them. If they want enough and they don't want to work weekends and stuff like that, it's probably not going to be the business model that we want because we want our staff to work and be passionate about it. And as a non-selling principal, I give a lot of my, uh, a lot of the resources that I have, I pay for their mentoring personally because I, I don't want to be seen competing with them. I yeah. want them to, get, them to get 100% of the benefit. So when we figure out, and I ask them a very blunt question, and you can ask all my stuff. I say to them, how important is money to you? And some of them are a bit shocked that I ask them. But Carl, the reality is in this life, money talks. And I think we need to be very honest about that. I don't like money because it drives me, it, it buys me a Lamborghini or a fantastic house. If my daughter's in trouble and needs surgery, um, that's something that I don't want to have to worry if I need to go on a payment plan. Yep. If she needs to go um, to a special school which caters to her, I just want to pull out a checkbook and I want my staff to be able to do that as well. Yeah. Um, 
if they've got some problems and they need to go away and be away as a family for one month, I want them to have the resources. That's what money represents to me. Mm. Solutions for your life. And the reality is problems can come at any time. Uh, you know, I was in hospital last week. Um, my wife was in hospital the week before that. Um, and you need money to get out of those situations. And it's quite funny that, as you know, I've got a 17-month-old daughter and I, uh, she goes locally to the childcare center. And they asked me, I actually asked them, you, you know the cost of childcare. I didn't know it. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. And she yeah. told me, and I actually said to her, is that weekly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she no, said, no, 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 daily. Yeah. And I was like, my child better come out a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but these are things that come up. Yeah. And you have an obligation to that child. You brought that child into the world. You have an obligation where they say, Daddy, can I go to soft camp? Yes, you can, because I'm a performer. Yeah. So I sit down with my staff, and a couple of them are young. They want the fancy cars and all that. And I literally sit down with them, Carl, and says, and say, these are how many appraisals you need to do. These are how many door knocks you need to do. These are many. So if they're not on track, I sit down with them. Because as we all know, success leaves clues. And I always say, so does failure. Yeah. So if you haven't done it, there's a bit of an alignment or misalignment. So, but I'm very motivated and I take on my staff and I don't meet with them weekly. I meet with them daily because if they're having a bad Monday, chances are they're gonna have a bad Tuesday. Sure. Yeah. So again, I, I sit down with each of them for one hour every single day. How are you feeling? How are you going? What are your frustrations? Because that's my obligation. Mm. My obligation is at the end of three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, I say to them, well, you don't have any excuses because every single day we've talked about it. But if I was just giving them KPIs by a quarterly basis, they could have had something and they haven't chosen to share with me. Yeah. That's my problem. That is my problem. Mm. So I think helping people in my business and, and the ability to help my staff, I consider that a privilege and an honor. And sure. it's an obligation that I think great principles and especially people in real estate they take it very seriously they invest in their staff because the staff are the front face of the business so let's change gear a little bit what are some of the things that you look back on over the start of the business and go that was definitely a mistake is there one thing or a couple of things that you can say we did that wrong or, or we sort of took a wrong approach to that no i try and look at everything in life maybe it's become because i'm coming a bit of an old man but everything's a learning sure um, there's probably some things that I've learned more from than less, but we went out and did a lot of competitions and stuff that actually didn't result in many financial transactions. Yep. Um, I think that more hitting the pavement and going, doing, whether it's door knocking or calls or whatever it is, and just getting my staff to be more accountable as opposed to, well, you know, we're a division of Springfield Land Corporation, all the leads are coming to you. And I said to them, well, that's absolutely not the case because some people love us, some people hate us. Mm, yeah. um, but you need to form your own identity. And I'm very grateful to, you know, Daniel Hayes, who is a friend and a mentor of mine. Um, an extraordinary story, no time in real estate. He was a social worker and broke a record in his first year just because he had dedication. He saw someone painting the house. Hi, sir, are you thinking of selling? Saw someone with a skip in. Hi, sir, are you thinking of selling? So probably less mentoring and more just getting on with the tools and getting on with the job. Sure. Um, that's what, if you're asking me what my advice would be to a new agent, mm -hmm. that's what it would be. Just get down and do, do the hard yards. You know, I know a lot of people talk about the disruptors in the industry, and absolutely these disruptors are coming, but I feel that there is still a, a good, at least three years, I say five years, but at least three years of good old fashioned door knocking, community events, and phone calls that will still get you listings. Mm, yeah. I, I don't think I'm far off when I say three years. Sure. You know? What are you looking at doing moving forward? Like, is there is there certain things that you're looking to do with your business in terms of growth, or is it just more of the same? 
Um, we really take great pride in getting very connected with the community. And I really want to give back on a monthly basis. So perhaps, you know, we can share a little bit about these high teas that we're doing. Um, they're about empowering local women in the community and they're giving back to local charities. And really, my, I want my staff to become their own brand. I don't want Greater Realty to be the brand. I want my staff to get 100% of the benefit of all of these networking events. But I just love being part of the Greater Springfield community because, as you know, it is very, very unique. Um, you know that when I sit here at a coffee shop, our time is probably quartered because I'm yeah. always saying hello to people. <laughs> but it's not just me. It's everyone. You will always bump into either someone who your kids go to school with or something like that. And I have a friend who lives in Chapel Hill. And every time he comes here, he says, it's just like this little bubble. Everyone knows everyone. Yeah. I kind of talk to my neighbors in Chapel Hill once a week, once a fortnight. And then I have to drive in my car and go down to the shops. Here, you're walking distance to a lagoon, to a parkland, to a shopping center, to a university, to a hospital. It's crazy. Um, so I really want my staff to become connected with the community. In terms of our business, I really want to stick to the basics. Sometimes I think that, you know, we talk about hustle and we, we see all these great entrepreneurs like Richard Branson getting into Virgin Galactic and all that. Richard Branson has been around for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for at least 20, he stuck to the basics. And then when he started getting a really solid foundation and a global brand, he started saying, maybe we should do space travel. Maybe we should do these other things. But I think young people are so enthusiastic because of people like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk and stuff like that. They, you know, want to go out and create an Uber. Mm -hmm. Just be great at what your core skills are first and have massive credibility and then go and do all these interesting things. The interesting thing about Greater Springfield is it started as a residential development. Yes, we have lagoons, hospitals, golf courses, um, seniors living facility and all that. But for the first 18 years, we were residential. Wow, that long. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, because you need a strong residential base for people like hospitals to say, well, what's your population? Yeah. Can a hospital be sustainable there? What's a shopping center like? Have you got the numbers? Why should we put a train station out there? So become a great agent first, and then you can start looking at other things. But we do have some plans. We do have some plans to diversify into becoming a one-stop shop for an agency. Um, because a lot of people, as you know, in a transaction, they have to see a lawyer, they have to see an accountant, they might need to see a financial Mortgage planner, broker, uh, yep. you know, to pay their utilities and all that kind of stuff. And I guess a benefit of being Springfield Land Corporation, we can have access to all those resources. And that's really, going back to your earlier question about why is Springfield Land Corporation taking on? We do have, I guess, buying power or negotiating power. We want to hand that back to our residents. We want to use that sphere of influence and give it back to them because they deserve it. Mm. So do you see that as, as a, we talked a little bit, you touched on disruptors before, but do you see that as being a, a way for the, 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 the real estate agency as it is today to kind of continue to be viable by introducing, like in the UK, residential real estate is basically just the, the, the front yeah, runner absolutely. for the yeah. finance market broker Correct. in the background. Yeah. So do you see more agencies moving in that way where they can sort of add on life insurance and mortgage broking yeah. and finance packages to, to build it up? Yeah, look, it's an, it's an incredible point and I do believe that is accurate because if you're looking even at technology like Snapchat, it's reducing the amount of time that people have to look at something, whether it's five seconds or 15 seconds and Instagram and Facebook are all doing that now mm. because people have less patience. They don't spend as much time surfing the net or Googling. They're like, Carl, just give me the, the just give me the summary version. Yeah. I don't have time. Even though they're actually not doing anything, they yeah. just don't yeah. have time. I mean, who would have thought, Carl, that a two minute video is too long? Sure. You know, you and I would watch something for 20 minutes before yeah. getting a bit bored. Um, I see my nieces and nephews and your children will be the same. 
you know, Dad, if it's not 30 seconds, it's too much for me. So yeah. I think that people want to go to one service provider and if they can do everything and they can be assured that the information that they're getting is a high quality, they will pay a little bit of a premium. Mm. I know that with Apple, I don't buy my, my affiliated products from JB Hi-Fi because I have a concern that they're not going to be as good as Apple. Yeah. So I'm quite happy to drive another 20 minutes to an Apple store mm. just because I know it's more likely to work. Yeah. Um, so I think with agencies, if they are able to take care of the moving, of the utility transfers and all that kind of stuff, and you're seeing it with the likes of Bray White and all these bigger Concierge, brands, yes, yeah. they are diversifying mm. because they're saying if we can take less headaches from our clients or if we can take more headaches from our clients yeah the more likely they are to stay with us it's funny isn't it it's one of the only industries really that hasn't moved in that direction i mean you don't take your car to the to the to the car garage for a Absolutely. service along you know you bring along your oil filter and your oil Correct. like they take care of that yep. it's Absolutely. a peripheral product that you could buy off the shelf but yes. You take it to the garage for them to do it. Yes. You know, you go and buy a car quite often if you get finance. Correct. You get it through the dealership. Like, Even you know, though you know it's at a higher percentage. That's right. Yeah. It's because it's just convenient. Yeah. You know, supermarkets are exactly the same. The reason that the, the small independent butcher and grocer and so on are losing or, or almost lost altogether now yes. is that they provide a singular product when you can go to the supermarket and get everything that you want at once. Exactly. And I think, yeah, the real estate, there's an opportunity to bring all of those services that are involved in moving home or buying yes. a house yes. under the one roof. Yeah. And you can see it in all sectors, most recently Amazon. Who would have yeah. thought that Amazon would be getting into the mom and dad retail game yeah. in a physical presence? And as soon as the announcement was made, major retailers are just absolutely fret, fretting. You yeah. know? So this is the way people want more for less in a quicker time frame. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, mate, I've taken up more than enough of your time. No, so thank really you. appreciate you coming on. You. Absolutely enjoyed uh, listening to your comments there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your time, Carl. Thanks for your Appreciate it. it.